Fighting games have become more accessible with the addition of things like auto combos and modern controls. Although it's probably true that the biggest barrier to entry for fighting games is difficulty, the skill floor has never been lower, and I think there's a different barrier of entry that has not been properly addressed. I think this, this, and this keeps more players out of fighting games than they bring in. Let me try to substantiate that a little bit. I don't think it is important to players. Everyone knows you have to please your target market. If Street Fighter fans do not like Street Fighter, then it's very unlikely that the game is going to succeed. I believe how each character plays is infinitely more important to fans than what they're dressed in. Intuitively, we know this to be true. Maybe you try to main a character because you think they look cool or cute, but you will eventually gravitate to a character who feels right. You'll gravitate to a character who you like playing, not just looking at. I don't think Kami mains who spend thousands of hours learning her and her matchups will drop her in Street Fighter 7 if she isn't wearing a leotard. I think they'll drop her if she doesn't feel right or maybe if she's unviable. On June 26 of 2023, Skullgirls announced that it'll be censoring some of its artwork. This censorship included a reduction in the sexualization of characters. Although there was a Twitter storm and a review bomb, the player base actually increased very slightly. Although outrage at some desexualization might have seemed big, the player base was largely unaffected. That's because the people who play the game every day do not care about artwork. They care about how the game plays. As for casual fans, I don't think people who buy $70 games buy them for lewdness. Why would you spend $70 to stare at characters you could look at for free? Okay, let's roll with it. Maybe you did buy it for lewdness. Is that really going to be a good enough reason for you to stay? Street Fighter 6 is the least lewd Street Fighter to date. Many casuals will never even obtain the leotard. Is it a coincidence that it's also the most successful Street Fighter to date? Explicit content may not bring people in, and it definitely keeps some people out. Be me, playing Street Fighter V with my family. My father is old as rocks, so he's actually pretty decent since he played Street Fighter II as a kid about like 70 years ago. I don't know. After every match, I prayed nobody picked Armika. Nobody needs to see Armika. My little brother do not need to see her. I don't know why they gave her her outfit. It's so out of place. It doesn't make sense. It's over the top. I hate it. We should have just played Smash Bros. In the end, nobody played Armika because, I, I mean, like, why would you? Ken's right there. But it made me feel uncomfortable. Over-sexualized elements in these games also make me feel uncomfortable when I'm playing around my girlfriend or even some friends. If playing this game makes me feel wrong as a 25-year-old man, imagine how alienating it could be for a woman. Do you think most women would want to play this? What are you waiting for? I mean, obviously some do, but I think there is a large population of women who would play fighting games if some of this stuff was taken out. Just look at games like Valorant. Everyone's reasonably dressed. There is a good healthy number of female agents, but none of them are dressed in crazy stuff like this, and the female player base is huge compared to fighting games. Imagine being a curious young boy. Maybe you're sick of Call of Duty, maybe you're sick of Fortnite, sick of Madden. You see a Street Fighter stream with a 5 figure view count. Right as you click on it, you see this. And now you have to explain it to your mother who just walked in. I cannot show you a study that estimates the number of people who skip out on fighting games just because of explicit content, but I think it's a reasonable conclusion given the arguments that I have laid forth today. Nick A30 is trending right now. He's a popular Fortnite streamer who tries very, very hard to be family friendly. I think it's admirable that he clocks into work and tries to make gaming accessible to children in a safe way. As his clips have been going around, people have been making fun of him for being cringy. I mean, all children's entertainment's cringy, so I don't really get the joke. You're the king. I'm the king. You in what army? Oh, crap. But really, all I could think about is how Nick A30 could not exist as a Street Fighter content creator today. Assuming there was a market of Fortnite-age children ready to watch a family-friendly Street Fighter streamer, 
There isn't. It would be extremely difficult to keep a stream family friendly. Would you dodge every classic Kami and Jury? Well, that's probably not going to work out too well. All you could really do is mod your game so much that all of the risque options are taken out of it, which is literally impossible on PlayStation. Fortnite and Street Fighter are both T for teens, but sometimes it feels like they're worlds away in appropriateness. Some games probably should never be changed. Explicit content is the identity of games like Mortal Kombat and Dead or Alive. For games that appeal to a wider audience like Street Fighter, I think there's a couple of options. Although the ideal scenario would be putting love into new costumes that make sense for each character, taking extreme measures like removing costumes from a game that's already out is a little unrealistic. I think in this case, a more modular approach to a game like Street Fighter 6, which just came out, would go a long way. What if Capcom put their heads together and identified the most risque costumes, which is harder than you would think, and hid them behind a slider or setting, kind of like a parental guidance built into the game? PG mode. If your opponent is wearing a censored costume, PG mode will randomly change it to an approved costume. This setting would even accommodate players who would quit if explicit content was removed since it doesn't apply to them. Maybe all of Capcom's official tournaments are run in PG mode, so potential viewers can watch gameplay without being immediately turned off by an optional costume. If this actually became effective at bringing new players in, maybe community tournaments would use PG mode. Yes, PG mode is already possible with mods, but I believe official support would only grow the player base. I think it would be silly for me to leave out the fact that I'm talking about censoring what each character is wearing while beating each other unconscious. It's ironic, but for some reason we're okay with violence but not sexuality. In GTA, you could literally commit the most heinous, savage, insane crimes. It's M for Mature. But once they found hot coffee, they decided to rate the game adults only. There's just a certain taboo around sexuality that we as a society do not keep the same energy for when it comes to violence, especially in our entertainment. When I propose these changes, I don't want to make it seem like sexuality should be hidden and violence is a-okay. I'm just trying to think of ways to expand the audience in the world we already live in. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts down below. I would love to get your perspective if you're a longtime player, if you're a casual, especially if you're a parent or a female gamer or a woman gamer. So yeah, uh, that's all I have. Have a good one. Thank you so much. Never back down, never what? Never give up. Never back down, never what? Never give up. Let's ride. Let's go.